A new set of MTG cards has come out. That means it's time for us to do the same thing we do when a new set of MTG cards come out. We're gonna go through it and look for the commander cards. From niche to mainstream, we're gonna talk about our favorite cards for commander. And the video starts right now. And the video starts right now. And the video starts, and the video starts. And the video starts right now. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We're going to go through Crimson Vow, pick out our favorite commander cards, and talk about them at your face. But before we get into that, if you would, think about it. Just by the end of the video, if you liked it, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. That's right. Joel always has really fun and interesting stories to start out the video. And Joel, that was one of your most thrilling tales. Let's go ahead and talk about the EDH cards that we think are notable. Whether it's a mainstream deck or it might just be your favorite tribal theme. Let's talk about the cards. All right, so we would be remiss, Jake, I think, if we did not start with the land cycle from this set, because specifically for Commander, it is quite good. We've got the green and black one, we've got the green and blue one, we've got the white and black one, we've got the blue and red one, and we've got the red and white one. Yeah, these cards are just fine, in my opinion, but for EDH, I think they're good. I think that they are good in Commander. If you have two or more lands, they enter untapped. You can't tutor them up unless you have a card that says a land. That's the big drawback for me is you're not going to be fetching these with any fetch lands or anything like that. However, from like a mid range, like mid power level, I think that these are a fine addition for any EDH deck and just like a great land that can be a starting place for, uh, you know, just yeah. getting a, a good solid mana base going i see it as fixing that could possibly come into play untapped right it's like a gate exactly. but is better and so if you're able to help fix your colors with those let's rock and roll jake first up we've got soren the mirthless look at him chilling in the corner being all coy yeah, this card is fun because it's got velocity and it has some protection built in. For four mana, we're getting four loyalty. That plus one, we get a, essentially a dark confidant. And then for minus a two... A may we, dark confidant, which is even better. Yeah, you may do it. So if you're going to kill yourself, then the plus one, you know, you can just uptick and elect not to do the ability. But the minus two is pretty interesting. It is going to be able to mitigate that life lost if you do elect to uh, draw cards off the top of your deck. This is interesting, though. Creating a 2-3 black vampire creature token with flying and lifelink. We have some evasion there and we have lifelink, obviously, that matters. The minus seven is okay. It's not excellent, but it's not terrible if you do get there. Yeah, I think that it's particularly good in a vampire tribal deck, obviously, because you're creating a vampire creature token. Normally, I don't really like Planeswalkers in EDH, but it does protect itself and it contributes to velocity. So there's a possibility that, you know, if it's not the biggest target on the on the battlefield, that this could fly under the radar and get you a lot of cards in your hand. I mean, at the very least, you reveal a land, reveal it, put it in your hand, you lose no life and you clear the land off the top of your library. So... That's right. I, you know, as a planeswalker, it's it's fine. Here it is again. Not sure what happened with that. A little bit of a glitch in the system, but you know, let's go to Toxrel the Corrosive next, Jake. Yeah, so this is a a, a big beater. Definitely gonna be more mid power. Is not really talking about any C E D H cards. Maybe some stuff will get close, but this is just a great reanimation target. It comes with keyword soup all over it. Everything Seriously. that you want is in here. Yeah. Creatures you don't control. Yeah, I mean Go ahead. Let, it's, what it's do you a, think about it, Joel? It's a fun one. Put us at yeah. the end of your end step. You're, I mean, the beginning of your end step, you're putting the slime counters on. As long as Tox was on the battlefield, your creatures that you don't control are getting minus one, minus one for each the slime counter on them. When it dies, when a creature you don't control dies with a slime counter on it, you create a one, one, and then you can pay a blue and a black to sack a slug and draw a card. So it's like you said, just this big, fun value beater thing that I think could be really fun in the right EDH deck because you've got all of this different, just so much happening. However, it is seven mana to cast. So yeah, it being a reanimate target is, is probably its prime use. Jake, we had a little bit of a cemetery cycle in this set and we've got a couple of them on this list. 
the first of which is Cemetery Gatekeeper. When it ETBs, you exile a card from a graveyard, and this is just like spot removal for a graveyard, which can be really good. You know they've got a bunch of graveyard reanimate targets. Start acing those, because then, whenever a player plays a lander cast a spell, if it shares a card type with the exiled card, Cemetery Gatekeeper deals two damage to that player. So this could contribute to like a group slug deck where, you know, it's combined with things like Mana Barbs, Furnace of Wrath, Damage Doublers, this kind of thing to, you know, just sort of burn everybody down at once. Yeah, a source could be a big thing. Like Fiery Emancipation comes to mind. Um, the reason the card is on the list, in my opinion, is because it does say whenever a player plays a land... Or like, cast a spell if it yeah, shares the a card land type. on there is what really sells me because the land is going to be a thing that is going to be happening all game by everybody. Right. Or cast a spell if it shares a card type with the exile card. So that is going to be a little bit more niche. But again, like you're saying, uh, two one first striker for two nice early body. It's able yeah. to get through it. It it trades nicely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, little, a, it's a little a strong low CMC. Card. Not bad. So red and two other for an aura curse here. Curse of hospitality. Uh, enchant player, creatures attacking enchanted player have trample, but then this is what really matters. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to enchanted player, that cr that player exiles the top card of their library, and until end of turn, that creature's controller may play that card, and they may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. Really good velocity here, but what really matters here, and this may be the card that has a little bit of like an aggro, very competitive EDH strategy, because you will have the chance to essentially exile your opponent's win condition. If it is a Thassa's Oracle, a Demonic Consultation, something that's going to enable an interaction like that. This card is very strong, and I do think that it's going to be a good card to uh, enchant whoever you think might be the biggest menace at the table. Yeah, asymmetrical, asymmetrical impulse draw. That's pretty fun. Yeah. I like this a lot. I've got a Marisi deck that's completely built around Goad as a keyword, and it's got, you know, Curse of Opulence in there. Cards like that that incentivize attacking other players just on top of all of the goad abilities and keywords that I already have in that deck. This absolutely goes into the 99 of that immediately. I've got to find a spot for this card because it's combining that incentivized attacking with impulse draw. And yeah, I mean, you could hit something as small as a free soul ring. You can hit something as big, like you said, ace, their, ace one of their win cons, ace one of their big... One of their big beaters. I think that's a pretty cool curse. I like how they've been printing more of awesome those recently. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Continuing that cemetery cycle, we really like the green one. Cemetery Prowler. It's a wolf, two green, one other for a three, four Vigi Wolfie. It enters a battlefield or attacks, which is, I think, one of the reasons that we really like this because it triggers on an ETB and an attack trigger. Exile a card from a graveyard. It's any graveyard. It doesn't even have to oh, be yeah. a graveyard that belongs to who you're attacking. You just attack or ETB later to any card you want to target then spells you cast cost one less to cast for each card type they share with cards exile with cemetery prowler so if when the ctbs you can ace a creature out of a graveyard then all of your creatures cost one less to cast you're in green deck you're playing wolves maybe that's your whole strategy just reduce the cost of all your creatures suddenly you're playing you know huge beady eight cost green creatures for just seven that's pretty excellent but then you can also on the attack triggers exile further cards and get that get those costs reduced just across the board i really think for three mana jake this one's got legs yeah it's gonna make your stuff cheaper and in edh i, I actually think this card is pretty competitive as well it's low to the ground it has vigilance it protects itself well with that four butt and it exiles cards which i think is a pretty fantastic ability for any card to have in edh we all know that in commander that graveyard is the second hand and a lot of people like to go back with an eternal witness or go grab any kind of return target card to your hand so being able to spot a player's combo spot a player's win condition in the graveyard this is one of those cards that's going to ace those and then it's also going to make your stuff cheaper so yeah i agree with you i think the card is very strong um i like that it doesn't flip either let's go ahead and talk about dig up one green and this is uh cleave here but we have some versatility going on so cleave what you need to know about that is if you cast for the cleave cost you do not pay attention to the brackets you essentially cleave them out of the text so for one green, you could search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. And then for that cleave cost, later on in the game, if you don't need that pretty basic ability, you can, for one green, two black, and one other, search your library for a card, 
put it into your hand than shuffle. It essentially becomes a demonic tutor for uh, a green and an extra black. Yeah. Pretty strong. Right. Exactly. I like that you don't have to reveal it either. If you do cleave, it's just straight up. Go search for a card. Versatility. It's good. Good early, and it's in good green, late. which right. is big mana. So it it's it's better in there. Like if for it were sure. different colors, if it were red black, I would like it much less. If it yeah, were, but it's a, I mean know, a black. one mana ramp spell ish ramp ish. You're gonna go get it into your hand. It's not onto the battlefield, but still sure. a, a card that you can play on turn one for good value, or a card that you can play on turn ten for good value. That's that's an interesting card that deserves a little bit of attention. Glorious Sunrise is a card that I've covered in a short already. I really like it. Two green, three other for an enchantment at the beginning of combat on your turn. So you immediately start getting value off of this enchantment. You don't have to like wait till your upkeep or anything silly like that. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one and gain trample end of, until end of turn. Or target land gains add three green until end of turn. Or draw a card if you control a creature with power three or greater. Or the fourth one and the one that will be used the least. You gain three life. I think that there's a lot of value on this card especially Same. over the course of an entire game i i even at five cost i like it and this is the kind of thing that i can say you know in my experience is going to be very attractive to commander players because it's just so much versatility i really like the extra value that you can get out of that jake next up we've got another enchantment it's a little more narrow but there have been a lot of you know good tribal love cards recently this one's laid to rest for four mana Whenever a human you control dies, draw a card. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it dies, you gain two life. So if you're playing humans, probably an include. If you're playing human plus one, plus one counters, definitely an include. But, uh, you know, getting some tribal love, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I definitely a narrow card. It matters in humans. It matters in counters. But I will say this. Um, yeah, I, I think it's strong as well. And I think that any type of strategy if you can combine both the card is just going to thrive that much more a little bit expensive at four mana but definitely some value here worth considering again enchantment it's going to be very difficult to deal with yeah absolutely there's another enchantments matter card that i wanted to talk about and that's katilda dawn heart dawn heart martyr jake dawn heart martyr you I'm practiced think about that it. word for like three hours today and in really you, tried you even sent me that message where you said dawn heart like a hundred times and i was like you got it man you'll do great tonight and then here we I are failed I'll, let me talk about this one you you've done the the name of it so for two white and one other we got a star star flying lifelink protection from vampires and then katilda its power and toughness are equal to the number of permanents you control that are spirits and or enchantments and then it has this disturb cost that is pretty interesting here legendary enchantment this is an aura Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has flying life lake and protection from vampires, and it gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of permanents you control that are spirits and or enchantments. So it's going to matter most in an enchantment matters deck, like we said earlier. If Katilda Rising Dawn would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So that's not exactly an ability that we love. But yeah, pretty pretty interesting card here with some good versatility as well. And again, in a situation where enchantments matter, yeah, it's a it's a it's a card worth considering for sure. Yeah, it's a creature that, to me, is a flying life-linking half of all that glitters, which is a wildly yeah. played card in decks like this. And then, once it's not a creature anymore that is counting for half of an all that glitters as itself, it disturbs for five and it becomes a an expensive all that glitters, you know, half of an all that glitters, plus flying, plus lifelink. So, I think that there's some playability here. In could the, be the commander of a of a mono white enchantments build you yeah. know i mean like there there might be something to say there because it's so low to the ground but yeah it's definitely a card worth considering again a lot of these flip cards they're going to offer interesting versatility in yeah. commander just because of that disturb yeah i think that an aura's deck could like that jake i put kaya in here so that we could talk about that minus two ability until end of turn, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. That is a hella strong ability. Mm -hmm. Everything else on this card, besides its CMC, is just fine to me. Yeah, Death Touch is like, well, we're getting through, right? I mean, unless sure. they want to block unfavorably, uh, you could have something, just a bunch of one ones that are able to just storm through. But yeah, you know, it. I, I do agree. The minus two is very strong in any type of, you know, uh, for me, the first deck that came to mind was like a Gav Guru of Spores kind of like big 
Abzan token matters yeah. kind of thing. I think that it could live nicely in there with that minus two, you know, playing alongside big cards like, you know, like obviously doubling season parallel lives, that kind of stuff. For sure. But yeah, the plus one creatures you control get death touch until end of turn, put a one one counter on up to one target creature token you control. So again, very narrow card, but in a tokens matters and again, Abzan kind of shell, I think the card could thrive in there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We got a weird one here. Little dollhouse of horrors. Pay one, tap it, exile a creature card from your graveyard. Basically, get a creature with that ETB back again. You create a token that's a copy of it, except it's zero, zero construct in addition to its other types, so it does still retain its creature types, which is relevant, and it retains all of its ETBs and all of its abilities. But it also has this creature gets plus one, plus one for each construct you control, and it gains haste. You can only do this at sorcery speed. It's not instant speed ability, but getting a creature back, getting an ETB back, it's even something as simple as an eternal witness for one man on the activation, a little expensive on the casting cost here, but activation of one, get eternal witness back, e eternal witness triggers, go get another card back, you know, this, and that's just like one example of how I think this could be used to some value. Yeah, I think so. And I think like, you know, Urza would like it, right? Because Urza creates constructs sure. as well. But the thing about Urza is that there are not going to be a lot of ETBs going on in that deck other than, you know, Urza itself, which has its nice ETB built in. Yeah. So yeah, I do think that the card is going to thrive more in like a, you know, like mid, mid power, casual power here. But I think it's a very fun card. Again, being able to abuse ETBs, even if you have an Avenger of Zendikar in your graveyard that you have no access access to right you could for yeah. one and tap just to get a one one avenger but now you're getting a bunch of plants for all of your all of your lands right right so there are going to be good uses for this card again the only thing holding it back from being more competitive in my opinion is that five yeah right absolutely let's talk about one of the cards that i think is going to be just an all-star edh card moving forward and funny it's a common so for three we have a mana rock add one mana of any color but that two on there exile target card from a graveyard that is a target and that is a graveyard so anybody who's messing around you don't need to use it for the mana rock ability you just get to go ahead and start targeting cards typically i see something that, like this on like a relic of progenitus but that's something where you have to like exile it you have to like i mean it's just this is very strong and we haven't seen anything like this before yeah i wish it was two because that would make it a very good mana rock. Oh, yeah. Three, Insane, yeah. it's fine. You know, I mean, still people still play like the dark steel mana rock that's just indestructible. Add one mana mm -hmm. of any color. But that repeatable machine gun of exile target card from a graveyard, that's pretty brutal. If you don't use it, leave it on tap. Use it at the ETB. Go back to your turn. You know, just ace their best stuff in their graveyard just in case. No returns for you. Yeah, it could be very interesting. Let's I like bump it. back up to Mythics. We've got a two blue, one other flying two, three spirit here. One of these cemetery cards again. ETBs or attacks again. So we like that version of it. We get to exile a card from a graveyard. And then we can look at the top card of our library at any time. And once each turn, you can cast a spell from the top of your library if it shares a card type with a card exiled with Cemetery Illuminator. So when Cemetery Illuminator enters a battlefield, you put that ability, exile a card from a graveyard onto the stack. Then because Cemetery Illuminator's on the battlefield, you can go ahead and look at the top card of your library at any time by retaining priority with that ETB on the stack. You could potentially on the turn that this enters name the card type or exile a card that shares the card type of what's on top so that you could cast that spell from the top of your library if you want. But regardless, Jake, after a couple of triggers of this, the ETB and then like an attack tr trigger or two, you've pretty much, hopefully, if there's been stuff in the graveyard, been able to exile the right stuff to be able to cast those spells from the top of your library. You know, it's a, I, I think it's not going to go in every single blue deck, but I do think there's, there's potential here, especially in a deck that cares about exiled cards, for this to be a good card. Yeah, two, three flyer for three is good. That flying again, important. But yes, being able to exile cards from the graveyard is very good. And I actually, I, I do think that this card is going to be competitive. I think we're going to see this pop up in constructed 60 card decks as like a three of, four of, possibly. Obviously, it matters in spirits. In an ED, in EDH spirits, this card is just fantastic. Sure. Um, and it gets better with stuff like Sensei's Divining Top, like we talked about. Any type of... Uh, top of your library manipulation anything from like a crystal ball just scrying something away 
then you're able to plan for this, right? But yeah, like Joel was saying, you are able to maintain priority and use that ability. I mean, it's it's pretty good. It's only really going to whiff if you have a land up there. And next we have Blood Fountain. This is one that I wanted to include as well at the common level. I just love that it it enables in a way for one black it enables through this blood token that you could pay one to discard a card that you don't want in your hand. Maybe in a Graveyard Matters deck, this is where this card is really going to thrive. And then especially later on, on like an ETB, you could just pay one black and three other to get two creature cards back to your hand. Any type of value type stuff. So I really like the cheap converted mana cost on the front end of this. That blood token allowing us to loot and then late game having some versatility get some value back from the yard. I think this card is an exceptional common, and again, we talked about in this video, artifacts enchantments, they're difficult to deal with, so I like the versatility here. Yeah, nice little utility artifact for a low CMC. What cards for Commander do you like from Crimson Vow? Let us know down in the comments. Yes, let us know what your favorite cards were, what we missed, and until next time, we will be out doing vampire stuff because that is what's in style right now is vampire stuff right we're gonna go out and we're gonna try to bite people yes and then we're, we're going to uh try to stay uh, out of the sun that can yeah we're gonna stay out of the sun that's a good one and we are going to hunt for bad vampires which means that we will be creating stakes that we can shove into bad vampires oh, i thought you meant stakes like the stakes are going to be high like we're creating we're putting some emphasis on what we will be doing well then you and i will be doing two different kinds of stakes because i i want to do that but then we're also going to need to make physical wooden stakes that we can shove into bad vampires hearts we could start because a vampire restaurant and sell stakes we and we sh we could and then in three then we're firing on three different cylinders we have we're penetrating vampire all stakes. markets that's right yeah we'll target all markets you're seeing the birth of something big here